incidence of diverticulitis is increasing in, in, in anecdotally and data in the literature confirmed is increasing significantly. So I think one of the things we run into is that the guidelines have changed in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so. Um, you know, when I started my surgical training, the dogma was to operate after two attacks of diverticulitis. And if the patient was young, even after one attack, and there was no differentiation if this was a complicated diverticulitis episode or just a simple diverticulitis. We've moved away from that. Um, now it is much more uh, patient situation centered decision making. Um, there is no clear cut, you know, after this many attacks, you do surgery kind of thing. And we tend to stay away from surgery for uncomplicated attacks. Because once you start re uh, uh, reading these uh, 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 trials uh, that, that, uh, that come primarily, as I said, from Europe, you see that there is a selection, right? Those are, uh, they're not uh, um, older than 85 year old. They are hemodynamically stable. They exclude the uh, INCHI 4. Uh, and and uh, and patients that are not immunocompromised. So you 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 still need to use your judgment. Um, there's been studies supporting uh, not treating with antibiotics for mild acute diverticulitis attacks that are uncomplicated, um, and just uh, having the patients go on a clear liquid diet. And there is good data to support that. So the role of antibiotics is changing. Um, I think there's a lot we don't know as far as diet and probiotic roles and, and things like that for mild uh, diverticulitis. The microbiome is now becoming a hot topic, uh, long overdue, of course. Uh, if you think about the what goes on in our, in our GI tract and uh, the diversity of uh, microbiome, not only between individuals, but also in the same individual over time and how uh, uh, quickly can change based on environmental uh, factors. I think some of the newer things are going to be uh, preventative as far as um, what is the role of the microbiome? What is the role of genetics in this? Uh, because what I see is increasing severity of disease in younger and younger patients. And um, if we can figure out what is driving that and how to change the course of that, um, that will make a big difference. So I think one of the bigger things that, for a disease that's so common, we actually don't know a whole lot about what actually causes it. <music>